So this is not the album before The Offering, which I have reviewed. This is their second album. So those who don't know the uh, kind of lineup of the albums, uh, they have the first album, then they have the second album, which is uh, this, which is uh, Fall From Grace. Then they have the third album, Purgatory, and then they have The Offering. So uh, there's an album in between uh, this album I'm reviewing as well as The Offering, which I reviewed. Now, The Offering was a very kind of huge, epic um, piece of an album. It uh, told um, a story throughout. It had amazing vocals. It had great melody. It had some good heavy um, aspects. Um, they had um, a female guest vocalist in two tracks. They had an epic long uh, track at the end. had amazing guitar solos. It had uh, great keys. It had um, soaring parts. It had uh, orchestrations and everything. The album was pretty big. Now, uh, with this album, Fall From Grace, this is not a concept album. So each track is its kind of own individual uh, kind of thing. And um, it doesn't have the orchestration um, aspect. That is alone just in the offering. That's the first album when they kind of brought in kind of an orchestra, though they didn't use an actual orchestra um, because... Um, when talking to the uh, lead vocalist, he says he doesn't have the money to afford an actual orchestra. So that was obviously just kind of made up from probably computer effects and things. But um, yeah, uh, Fall From Grace doesn't have that. It uh, basically just um, each song is their own individual thing. It has its own kind of vibe and tempos and melodies and things. And um, no orchestra. It's uh, pretty keyboard heavy. Um, so it does still have that kind of um, big um, epicness to it because of the soaring kind of key flows that have run throughout. But um, that is kind of pretty much it. Just um, a kind of basic album. It's kind of quite key heavy, great vocals, good solos. And uh, has um, some great kind of melodies to it, although it maintains a kind of heavy aspect. So that is uh, the gist of it. So let's get into the first track, which is... Finest Hour. So Finest Hour is um, quite a special track because it has something that no other song in their entire catalogue has. And that makes it quite unique and kind of a really enjoyable track to hear because whenever it does this unique aspect, it's just something so new and so different and it's the only time you get it. It makes you actually really enjoy that part because it's just so different to hear. Instead of uh, just like, well, this is still the vocalist, it's just a different maybe pattern, or this is a different solo, but there are other solos. This is just, this is something new, and it's the only thing this band does this time, which makes it quite special. But until we get to that uh, special part, um, the basic gist of the song, um, you get um, the verse, which has, um, a great energy to it because uh, the keys are so bright and they're uh, so kind of loud it, it's probably the most um up front um, instrument uh for this song um, in the verse uh, the guitars kind of just kind of keep a bit of a back pedal um, the keys are doing kind of a lot more than the guitars the guitars are kind of just they're just trying to keep a kind of heavy kind of beat going and then uh, you got the kind of drums under that just kind of keeping um a good kind of um up beat tempo to it but the keys are uh, definitely very forward and as keys go they're very bright and makes everything sound very grand very bright and magical the voice just absolutely soars throughout it just sounds like a lot of fun now the special part is when it gets to the chorus because for the majority of the chorus it's a long chorus so the majority of it about 85 percent of uh, this uh, chorus is all screamed now you're thinking, well, why am I now saying this is fantastic and uh, quite special? Because I personally don't like screamo. Well, even though 85% uh, of uh, the chorus is screamed, uh, the male vocalist um, is singing over the top of all of it. You never have the screamo sat by itself. So it basically just gives this really kind of aggressive edge um, to the actual vocalist. So it's not like um, the scream is its own thing. It's basically just like it's just adding power to the actual clean vocals. So the clean vocals are still the upfront presence and what is there. It just kind of gives it aggression even though it's not 
got anything to do with the voice. It's a separate voice entirely. But it just pushes that uh, clean vocal delivery a lot harder. And it just kind of gives it a lot of range because you've got the clean and then the kind of scream, which gives it, the, with the clean vocals, the um, amazing melody and everything. And then the brute aggression of the screams completely hitting each other and then just fusing together so kind of nicely. And it works extremely well. I wouldn't say it's a screamo heavy song because technically the entire chorus is screamed. But I wouldn't say there's really any screams in this because it's just handled so well that it's technically not anything like proper screamo. It is all still kind of clean. It's just basically there in the background just to give that bit of a push to the clean vocals. And as I say, it's um, amazingly well done. It adds so much kind of power and weight to it um, with melody kind of slash fusion aggression and everything. And it's perfectly done. And um, as I said, it's the only time you hear it. So it is really well done. Unfortunately, there's no solo in this track. So when you get to the end, um, that's kind of it. Uh, the end part of the uh, song just kind of is just kind of uh, some random person on the intercom. You don't really know what he's saying, and that goes on for a few minutes, and then the song just ends, unfortunately. And that's pretty much it. So Words I Fail to Say takes it in a more kind of grander aspect than uh, the previous track. Uh, this song changes things up um, the second it hits the uh, verse, because uh, the first part of the verse is melodic, you've got uh, clean guitars, you've got, you can hear the bass, you can hear the drums. I don't really think there's any uh, keys uh, mixed into there, but um, yeah, it's just uh, the clean guitars, you got your bass and you got your drums. The vocals over the top um, sound very kind of pleasing, they're very warm, kind of their uh, delivery. Um, it's good because um, immediately after kind of fun, energetic uh, first track, Finest Hour, it's nice just to get um, now a completely different uh, kind of change. Um, the near the end of the uh, verse, uh, they do kind of build it up and everything uh, just before it hits the uh, chorus, uh, where everyone kind of uh, goes back onto the kind of heavy gain channel. And before the chorus um, kicks in, you have um, a lead up to it, which is uh, the uh, lead guitar. It's um, just some kind of uh, playthrough, uh, not really a lead solo of any sorts, it's just a lead that just uh, kind of uh, takes us verse to the uh, chorus. The lead is very pleasing, it is very nice, it's well done, well executed. The chorus um, has um, a great kind of melody to it, it's uh, very relaxed, it uh, has a slowish kind of uh, beat to it, so it's a bit slow paced and everything, but um, it's very kind of um, just simple uh, laid back kind of uh, vibe it's uh, got um, great beauty uh, to it uh, with the uh, vocals and everything and it's uh, just very kind of relaxed and very pleasing the second verse um, doesn't have the melody aspect it's basically just um, completely uh, heavy it doesn't last overly long either it's quite short leading back into that uh, lead uh, guitar that leads back into uh, what the uh, chorus is after that we actually do get a solo now there is um, a bit of a play up to the solo, but when the solo does hit, it's quite uh, low in the mix. It's not really in your face, it's not loud and um, really kind of making its presence known. It's quite subtle. You, you can tell it is the lead solo and you can hear it, it's not basically you have to really focus. It's just it's quite low in the mix, it doesn't have a hard hit to it. And the solo itself is quite repetitive in nature, it's quite unfortunate when this uh, guitarist is actually very phenomenal. Um, you can tell it is played by someone who does have a gift for guitar because uh, the tone and everything and the play he does does sound and come across nice. It's just um, it's a bit simple and he's not doing um, that much. After he's done with the solo though, um, it goes to acoustic, so you get acoustic guitars that then leads back into the chorus. The chorus is a bit more heavy uh, this time than um, the uh, previous choruses. Um, the guitars are just a bit more kind of aggressive in their, their show and everything and that's pretty much it so um, a bit of variety it is um, a good song and enjoyful melodic uh, easy to listen to digestible chorus you've got the melodic uh, first part verse and then a bit of a heavier aspect you got a solo there you got some leads and um, before choruses 
So a bit to offer, but um, still nothing unbelievably uh, groundbreaking and uh, grand nature, but it has built it up uh, to kind of uh, progress onto that forefront. So this is the title track, Fall From Grace. Now, um, this track again kind of changes uh, how they kind of approach the song and set up. It still has um, a similar kind of uh, flow to it and structure like the previous songs, they just kind of change tempos and things. So with this verse for this track, it's now kind of heavier than that first track, Finest Hour, because the Finest Hour, the keys were more in the foreground and the guitars took a bit of a backseat. As for Fall From Grace, uh, the guitars are now taking the foreground, so it's guitar uh, forward, so it makes the sound um, more kind of heavy and aggressive, and the keys are in the background, so it still has that kind of um, big kind of magical kind of sound to it, but they're just not as heavy and in your face as Finest Hour was, and it's not as soft as the verse that uh, came from uh, the track uh, before this one. So uh, the verse is quite heavy here, which um, makes the chorus, which is melodic and uh, more melodic uh, than the previous track was, I failed to say. It's not melodic as in they use the clean channel or go acoustic or anything, it's just very um, subdued and very kind of laid back and subtle. And again, I really enjoy these contrasts of getting something very kind of heavy and aggressive for the verse and getting something really calm and relaxed. So I just get complete two different sides of a coin instead of just constant high energy. I get the best of both. I get my melody and I get my heaviness. And uh, that's what uh, this track uh, goes for. And uh, the verse, second verse kind of just goes along with the same kind of uh, nature and everything. Same with uh, the chorus. And you get some two kind of fake leads to solos because you get um, the keys are in the foreground um, after the uh, second chorus and you think the keys are basically just kind of uh, building up for uh, what's to become of the uh, solo but actually it doesn't after uh, the uh, kind of key just interlude it's not a key uh, board solo at all it's just a heavy keys um, being played and it just leads back into the uh, vocalist uh, doing something uh, different then you do get a sort of lead guitar solo, but it's very bland, very kind of basic and everything. Then you get um, the kind of chorus, and we're getting near to the end of the track. And that's where the actual solo is. Now this is uh, the best uh, solo so far. This is basically where the guitarist um, kind of lays with um, his caliber of uh, work. It um, has great uh, musicality to it, great rhythm. It has a blistering um, fast uh, paced um, part section to it and then it kind of interweaves back into uh, great melodies and everything. So definitely good uh, solo scene, it has good melody, um, good rhythm and then it has soaring fast paced um, leads and then it's got uh, great rhythms. And it um, just um, incorporates just a lot of uh, good techniques of speed, melody and rhythm and a um, good way to end the song and uh, definitely a, a great um, solo. So let's get into the next track. So where we started uh, starts the song off with a new uh, guitar tone for red guitars because they sound a lot brighter. So unlike the other tracks uh, which have their kind of, uh, kind of tone settings and everything put in their amps, this uh, song starts with a very um, high sounding um, squealing kind of guitar tone so it's very very bright and very high in their sound only lasts for the intro though until it hits um, the uh, verse now the verse is going back to a melodic start but um, unlike the clean channel guitar this is actually acoustic uh, guitar with um, just kind of acoustic guitar and um, drum and bass uh, with vocals and then again, um, a fair bit in, uh, the whole band comes in again, just uh, full um, power and everything. It's actually quite heavy. And the pre-chorus um, is very um, aggressive. Um, it's uh, got some very um, heavy um, attacks with the uh, guitars. And it's got an ear-blistering pinched harmonics and everything. The pinched harmonics are them uh, one-note, extremely high-pitched squeals that um, a guitarist can uh, pull off. Uh, by basically uh, pinching the uh, string and then it vibrates insanely uh, intensely which makes it scream. 
So um, that is basically what he does in these uh, pre course You have major aggression and then excruciatingly high pitch uh, squealing with uh, the uh, pinched harmonics. Um, uh, the chorus um, doesn't really kind of have any sort of thing like melody or anything. It's basically just um, a chorus that is just um, melodic metal. It's got everything still basically there. It just kind of opens it, uh, the sound up and everything. And then the vocalist just has a bit more of a kind of sort to his uh, vocal delivery instead of being a bit more kind of straightforward as he is with the uh, verse. Um, Leading up to the solo, you have um, builds up um, again. So where the first uh, build, uh, you have heavy um, keys and everything, which uh, makes it sound uh, quite um, orchestral actually, because the keys are quite intense and everything, and the drums are um, being a bit kind of thunderous and everything, giving it a bit of an attack to it. Uh, then uh, the rest of the kind of band comes in with rhythm. Then the uh, actual lead solo comes in. Again, it's a fantastic lead solo. It's got uh, some great speed at uh, parts, but it's got, uh, again, amazing rhythm and uh, kind of melody and feel to it. Um, it's um, really, really well done. Um, before the solo, you get um, a lead um, part um, as well. This time um, is uh, kind of uh, blues um, orientated, just kind of leading into a kind of change up in uh, the kind of song structure. So. Uh, as you come off of the second kind of chorus, um, it goes to a bit of a kind of bluesy lead. Doesn't last too long, it's just a few seconds. And then I believe it gets to a piano part, so it's not keys, it's piano based. And then as I say, you get the uh, kind of solo, and then after the solo it hits the chorus, but uh, the chorus starts with uh, just the uh, first few lines, just uh, done by the uh, singer, so just the soars, dun dun dun, dun, and then the band comes in there. And so, um, it does extremely well because his voice by itself, he has amazing kind of power and warmth to his voice. Because uh, sometimes when this happens, it's just extremely cringy because it's like your voice ain't working. Um, here it just works, it's just like you just kind of hear by it itself just the kind of power and warmth of his kind of uh, voice, and then the band comes in. And then near the end of the track, you get that kind of change in uh, pitch uh, from the guitars again, it goes to that very kind of bright um, sound. So, um, yeah, it starts off um, melodic and bright, and then it goes extremely aggressive with aggressive pinched harmonic. We've got a bit of a blues part, a bit of a kind of piano part. Great solo, <laughs> so a pretty decent track uh, where we started. So let's uh, move on to Breaking the Curse. So Breaking the Curse um, has a heavy riff um, compared to the others. Maybe the heaviest so far, actually. Um, the guitars are very heavy and aggressive, and the keys still doing their quite kind of um, kind of high-toned um, magical kind of sound because they're in the background. Um, even though it's got a kind of uh, majesty about uh, the kind of uh, sound and tone and everything, them heavy guitars definitely kind of makes it heavy and um, have that darker vibe to it. With the kind of uh, drum beat and everything, when the guitars kind of do come in, even though the keys are always going, and then the uh, way the, the uh, vocalist is uh, kind of um, saying his uh, kind of lines and everything, it has a really interesting beat to it. Um, it um, kind of has a constant flow, but um, he keeps delivering um, his lines um, in such a way that it's got such a real good kind of uh, beat to it. We can really kind of uh, bob your head to it and everything. It's um, a really a uh, great beat, and then the guitars are kind of going along with it, um, and uh, because of its hev heaviness, um, it's a very interesting verse. It's not you know very bright, upbeat, catchy, wail of the time type of uh, verse or anything like that. It's definitely got a dark kind of broodiness to it and everything, and it's heavy and stuff. But it's just the way he just delivers uh, the lines. It's like God, he's got the real great beat going on with uh, the way he's. Um, singing and uh, the uh, guitars being all heavy and quite chuggy and aggressive as well and um, it's an excellent verse chorus unfortunately actually isn't that great it um it's again like just one of these more kind of open choruses but it kind of falls flat because um it's just um a very laid back sound when nothing much going on and they just open it up but it's just like there's not really much going on there's nothing really interesting the sound does open and everything but there's kind of a lot of excitement in that uh, kind of verse and everything so coming to this chorus um it, because it's not doing enough like it's something musical or grand in any sort of aspect 
because of the kind of verse, it actually makes the chorus stumble a bit because of that, because you're coming straight to it, so you're going to kind of compare it and have the kind of emotion and feeling um, being took into the chorus. So if the chorus can't really live up to that, um, it's going to basically make you have a longer fall than if the verse didn't build you up that much, you haven't got that far to fall, if you get my j uh, what I'm kind of going on about there. Um, there's certain parts where the guitar kind of uh, kind of does its kind of own lead and everything. So after the kind of chorus and everything, it's not a lead lead or anything. It's just um, he's definitely in the foreground and everything, and he's got the kind of um, lead channel going. So he's definitely kind of hit that kind of uh, lead channel, which makes him louder in the uh, kind of presence of the overall sound. And um, sounds very good and everything. Uh, but as for the solo, which has a run up to it, um, a fair bit of a run up. When it starts, um, it starts quite kind of musical and high energy, but um, it's very fast. Um, it just kind of plays around for a while, and then he gets into the extremely fast part, and then he takes it even faster and um, aggressive. And then near the end, he kind of slows it down a tad, but um, it doesn't really last that long the end. So uh, for the most part, it's just a very fast uh, solo. And then as he finishes, it kind of just goes back into that uh, lead um, Tony does just dun 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 dun, dun, dun. Sounds a lot better with the guitar. But um, that's uh, pretty much it. And near the end of the song, um, you get a bit of uh, kind of lead tone from the guitar and everything as it kind of just finishes up on the song. But uh, no kind of actual lead of much. So great rhythm and uh, energy of uh, the verse and everything, and their uh, great lead tones um, at points. A very fast solo, which is great, and a chorus which ain't that great but um it's serviceable uh by all means so again not a bad track so let's get on to the next one regeneration so this track regeneration is those for the kind of guitar enthusiasts or just leads of any sort of caliber so this is probably the heaviest and also probably also the longest track it's five minutes 46 um, so it's fairly long and um, it starts off out the gates quite heavy and even the verse heavy um, it's got um, a lot of aggression uh, due to uh, the kind of heaviness of um, chugs of the guitars and everything they have aspects where um, the uh, guitar will kind of get to the end of a rhythm and then kind of go into one of those sort of lead um, things then go back into the rhythm uh, with the rest of the band so here and there he'll do this uh, same old, same old um, lead where he kind of comes out of the rhythm then he drops back into it. Uh, the pre-chorus he just completely shreds the crap out of it. It's uh, not a very aggressive type of shred, it's uh, one of these sweet picking shreds so it's down at the bottom of the neck so it's uh, very bright and everything and uh, quite round sounding so it's not very sharp and aggressive, it's not thick and moody. It's just a very relaxed thing. I think he's probably even playing it on the uh, bridge pickup in, as well because it is a very kind of bright um, sound he has and um, even though it's sheer speed he doesn't want it to be overbearing at all. So it's a sweep and everything down at the bottom probably on the bridge to try and just give it as least aggressive bite as he can. So it's very nice uh, the uh, shreddy does. And because I believe the lead singer is actually the lead guitarist, if he does this live, it's going to be a pain in the ass to pull off because he is shredding like crazy. And if it is sweet picking, that is excruciatingly tricky to do. That is very hard sweet picking. So to sing and do that, and even if it's not sweet picking, if it's just pure speed and everything, he has to be accurate and things, it's quite tricky so um, props to that that's definitely amazing the chorus uh, goes into more of a musical realm although it doesn't really actually go musical it's just that's the way it sounds it sounds um, just musical but it, it doesn't change it where the band slows down at all or gets very open in sound it kind of just sort of follows like the rhythm it just kind of opens up that kind of uh, verse part but so it has aggression, but um, it's just not as hard hitting at all. 
So um, it keeps that going. Uh, you get a key lead actually after this chorus. So um, the key lead is not very long. That's for the guitar part, which is hooey. Um, so uh, his part is uh, basically is leading it back to the uh, verse again. So uh, pretty short, and he just kind of uh, does a fair bit of speed and everything, a bit of a kind of hold down press on a key at times. And that is the majority of it, but it's nice just to kind of see uh, the uh, keyboards can do solos and has some speed and technicality to him. It'd be nice to see a bit more of it just so we can see how uh, wide a range he actually has. So let's uh, just uh, jump to uh, where the solo is. Now um, the solo has a bit of a build up and he's got a bit of a bounce in the way he builds it up so it's uh, quite high energy and got a bit of a bounce to it. Then he sends that kind of same rhythm but into a bit more of a kind of speedy pace and everything. So a bit more of a run and then he starts coming in with the uh, uh, solo um, there is a bit of speed in it but it's not overly speedy it's uh, mostly just a rhythm and he just kind of plays around with different kind of rhythms and everything and um, a few holds and then putting a bit of speed here and there and then it stops and then it goes into a very kind of um, galloping um, beat and everything and then it goes back into the solo so I think he's only basically done that because he just wants a different backing to him and uh, the second part of his solo is um, purely just um, slower and more melodic, although he actually does have more speed in it as well. So the second part of the solo is more melodic than the first, but has more speed than the first as well, so quite weird and interesting. Um, so a very long solo, very good, and then as the song ends, it just ends on just blistering shred. He just shreds and he shreds and he shreds and he shreds for a fair while and then um, he doesn't really stop because what they do is they do that typical thing where they just turn the volume down. So that it just uh, starts fading and fading and fading until it's completely uh, shut off and he just shreds all the way to the end. So um, definitely guitar heavy as well as you get that little tiny bit of um, keys. But, um, it's incredible the pre-chorus which he sings over and he is shredding as well to that with uh, some great tone to it just to make it not that sharp of a bite and um, in the verse he has that uh, bit of uh, lead coming through then he has two um, part solos and then at the end he just shreds the whole thing so an incredible track for uh, lead and it is quite heavy and everything with a chorus which keeps its heaviness but also maintains a melody to it so Excellent track. Let's get on to the next one. Watch the world collapse. Watch the world collapse is the only melodic of this album, and it follows the kind of traits of pretty much most melodics in uh, the realms of uh, metal. So by that I'm kind of saying um, the album The Offering by Borealis, their fourth album. The melody of that so um, album it started melodic. And then at the end, it built up to its heavy conclusion, then ended softly, and there was a lack of sort though. We've watched the world collapse, it's all melodic until right at the very end, where um, they build up and it gets heavy, and then it ends on a melody. And you've got bands like um, Defecto when you look at the album Nemesis. Now, uh, the two melodics, or one, can't remember if there was one or two. Um, was the exact same trait, um, just an entire melody with no solo. It seems quite common and I don't understand why, because uh, because it's so melodic and slow all the way to the end where it has the kind of big heavy aspect, it's like you kind of need to do a bit more than that just to kind of get excitement going, because um, it's just shy of a minute until the vocalist actually comes in. For around 55 seconds, it's basically just acoustic guitar and there is nothing really else. It's like, that's fine, but obviously that takes a long time. Then we just get a lot of singing and the song's four minutes, uh, four seconds. So we've got like um, a lot of time until it actually goes anywhere else. Now that's not to say that the song actually does evolve and go somewhere. So um, basically um, uh, the song keeps adding a few layers but nothing too grand. You get kind of keys that come in, you get a bit of the kind of orchestrational sound. But uh, they don't really do anything epic, nothing grand, you've got no big epic solo. 
no great kind of structures, the song doesn't go off into various different directions, it's just one constant direction. But they just add a tiny layer and be done with it until right at the end where it's just like, okay, we're just going to do a chorus, but it's going to be heavy and that'll be it. It's like, that's not exciting, it's extraordinarily predictable. I've heard it done a lot of times before, which makes the song pretty bland and pretty dull. Now, for what's there, is it therefore bad? No, the acoustic is nice, the voice is amazing. It, it kind of reminds me is it would really fit in with um, a band um, that would go on stage and perform in front of people who go to see the opera or a choir. It's an amazing voice and amazing acoustic and it's very chill, very relaxed and very warming and very pleasing. So it's definitely a nice song. It's just the people who kind of want excitement and something new in music it doesn't do that. It's just something where it's just like, if you want something kind of just relaxed and extremely basic, it does it. But then when you want the whole album to be really kind of excited and to be took places, when you get to this track, it completely kind of just takes that out and away from you. The majority of tracks before this are all exciting and interesting and you kind of get this which really digs the heels in and just slams the brakes on so bloody hard that you're going to get a concussion with how hard um, it uh, stops. Which is extremely disappointing. So there's not really much else to say because there's so little to it. But um, if you want something slow and basic out of the band, it does its job, but if you kind of want exciting and something relaxed but exciting, yeah, Watch the World Collapse doesn't do both. It's just slow and relaxed and that is as far as it goes. Let's get into the next track, which is Take You Over. So the interesting thing with this track, Take You Over, is at the start, um, it, the start is where the solo is. So they've took the solo out from uh, coming after the second chorus, the kind of bridge area and they've put it right at the start of the song. Now, some people may just say it's not really a lead solo, it's basically just kind of like a lead intro that just kind of starts the song off. It's not exactly uh, what you would call a solo. But um, I'm technically calling it a solo just because it doesn't repeat um, a pattern, a formula. Um, everything's kind of new and um, constantly um, inventive. It doesn't repeat a structure, a scale or anything. Nothing's shadowed and repeated basically, so it's all new and fresh, and then um, it lasts um, a decent while, it's not as long as I'd technically like it, but it lasts long enough where I would consider it is, you know, this is a solo, it's not just some silly little interlude type of thing. Now, um, obviously it's quite odd because um, when the song kind of actually starts and then finishes, and um, there is no solo there. The solo starts before the overall song kind of starts, which makes it feel weird and like it lacks a solo. So I don't know if it's really genius to put it um, up front, because then when the song overall starts, because it's always in that one place, it's where you always expect it to be. So when it's removed, you feel like the solo's not there because you're so used and your brain's telling you the solo's supposed to be there and it isn't. Therefore it tells you there's not. And if you're not really paying attention to just kind of listening with ease, um, you can easily forget the solo's there at the beginning because I've done it a fair few times where it's like the song doesn't have a solo. Then I listen at the start and I'm like, oh yeah, that is technically the solo, I guess. So, um, I don't know if I can really blame the band for that, for basically putting it in a different uh, place to kind of change up the layering of the song, or if I should blame the band for saying you haven't put it in always a uh, specific place. Because putting it in always a specific place, obviously you always know where it is and when it's coming. So when you first listen to it, obviously it being right at the start, um, you don't expect it. So. It's weird because it does kind of badly affect it, but then it also does kind of reinvent the structure of the song, and then it's unexpected, so that is good. So there is pros and cons to it, it just kind of depends on probably uh, your mood set of that day, or just overall. Um, I like it basically just if there is a solo, that's good enough for me. So um, I appreciate it. As for the actual verse, um, the verse is really heavy with uh, the kind of keys and everything which makes uh, it very grand and because there's kind of constant pauses where they leave um, a bit of uh, breathe room for just the vocals to sing and then the keys will come back eventually, it um, makes the 
um, it makes that part have a bigger punch because the keys come out and then they come back again with a bit of that punch and uh, everything. Because if the key part was always and always and always going, it's not going to have that much hard of a hit. Because it's just always there, so you just kind of get used to it. And when they kind of take it out and then they bring it back, it has that grand kind of hit and them um, attack um, that it does for you. Uh, the place where the solo actually is, they do kind of change it up. Uh, there's a leadish kind of interlude part of the guitar where it's just a repeated um, scale thing with I think the effect is a lot of delay um, just kind of making it have a bit of a, like um, an arena effect where it sounds like uh, the guitar's in a big room and it's kind of like bouncing off the wall kind of thing and um, there's a bit of a difference with uh, the vocalist and things but um, it's not overly too long it's basically just uh, the song just has a bit of a kind of change of pace and things just for like the odd uh, half a minute maybe or so so nothing too exciting. The chorus again, it's um, very uh, melodic and very open and uh, extremely relaxing and pleasing. As I say, the uh, verses with uh, them um, really grand kind of piano orchestral kind of sound that keeps coming and going and then coming back again and just always hits hard. And then the vocalist is really kind of short soaring with his voice and pushing. So it just sounds so big and anthemic. And again, it's good that they take it out and bring it back because if it was constantly uh, going, I think it would lose its edge and effect. So um, I really like the verse of this song. It's quite um, catchy and memorable just because of that um, key aspect because it just sticks in your head. And there uh, with the soaring vocal uh, melody as well. So good solo at the beginning. Um, and uh, the verse is absolutely incredible. The chorus. Um, they do courses like this um, a fair bit, so it is a bit similar, but um, it's still a great chorus uh, nonetheless. So, um, good track. Now let's get on to technically the last track, technically, which is Forgotten Forever. So Forgotten Forever starts off immediately kind of sounding uh, quite uh, grand like what the Offering album uh, gives you with the kind of orchestra always being there. So uh, with uh, the keys and the tone they use um, for this track uh, kind of throughout, it does sound quite kind of grand and orchestral in sound. And um, the lead guitar is usually always doing a lead um, through this song. So uh, the intro he has um, a lead kind of going. It's not a lead solo. Um, it is just kind of like uh, just a random lead intro thing. And uh, as for the verse, um, he's still doing um, kind of a, a different thing to the rhythm because you can hear the actual rhythm guitar and then you can also hear the lead guitar doing something uh, completely different. Um, it's kind of got uh, more of a brightness to it as it usually leads uh, do. The rhythm's usually a bit kind of fatter in sound and the lead's um, a bit brighter and everything. To, probably just to try and get it to pierce through everything. And they're not doing all the chords and everything, so there's not massive, you know, strings up at the top of the neck. It's somewhere down below, which overall uh, just makes it brighter and uh, pierce through a lot more because of all of that. But so uh, that is uh, quite uh, pretty much through the whole song, uh, the lead, even kind of into the chorus. Um, of course, again, it kind of just opens it up a bit. Uh, the keys, I think, kind of uh, quieten down in the chorus and everything. So the chorus is uh, still technically kind of like the other kind of Borealis uh, choruses, melodic kind of metal, bit of a lead uh, from the guitar doing his own thing. And then the verses again, as I say, um, the keys just sound uh, quite kind of grand and everything. The solo that uh, comes after the uh, second chorus, back in its typical place. Um, before it, uh, there's a piano part, and uh, then when uh, the lead solo starts, it's extremely kind of bouncy and everything, um, just um, so kind of upbeat and kind of like it's excited and uh, stuff and it kind of just bounces around like crazy, not exactly just doing anything, it's just very bouncy. And uh, then it kind of ends and the vocalist comes back and you kind of think, well even though it's got a fair bit of bounce to it and excitement, which is uh, you know kind of fun and everything and uh, cool to hear, uh, the kind of uh, bouncy start of it as it comes in. Um, that's kind of it, so you could do with a bit more, but then uh, 
after just um, a little while of uh, the vocals, uh, the solo actually does come back, which um, is kind of weird because it does kind of feel a little disjointed. It's hard to kind of join the two solos together. Like we have this solo, then try and connect this to that one. They feel like two separate solos. And because of that, each solo is kind of lacking in length because the one was just, it's just bouncy, that's it. And then this other one is kind of its own little thing. If you had to put them both together, and obviously they're quite different and everything which then adds um, a differentiating solo in just the one song and everything, but because of that little break in the middle, it's hard to join them both up. But if you were to, then obviously you do get a very diverse um, solo in this song, with the first part being bouncing, and then the second part just being a bit more of the kind of soaring anthemic uh, part of the uh, guitar with some fast uh, speed uh, thrown in there. So, um, yeah, you get two solos, or t one or two, Hard to say if you can. You can say it's one or t two. I, I have no idea. But um, they're both very different from each other, which is uh, great. And if you kind of uh, take up the time of both of them, then it is a pretty decently length solo, clearly. And the verse, um, obviously, it, it's got a slow pace to it. So uh, the verse does go at a very slow kind of kind of pace. But uh, because of the kind of anthemic kind of uh, aspects of it, it does kind of sound very grand. And slow, so it's just um, a very kind of slow, laid back, uh, relaxing end to the album. The term um, has lead uh, through wires and then a very kind of bouncy, energetic um, chorus. In that, kind of does it for the album in a way, technically. Now, because of I'm saying technically, is because you can get a bonus track, which is the journey prologue. And that's a bonus track. Now uh, that would, um, with the bonus track, that brings the tr uh, track uh, list to ten. If you don't get the bonus track, that's only nine tracks. Now I don't think you can get it without the bonus track. So I don't know why they say it's a bonus track because I can't find the album without the bonus track. So that doesn't make much sense to me. Now the problem I have with trying to review this now is I have the Japanese version, as you can kind of see by the album cover. It's Japanese. So what I'm, I've only got the Japanese tracks, but I haven't exactly listened to them because I've been listening to it on Spotify on my uh, TV. So um, not on my phone. My phone is the Japanese version, but I've been listening off the uh, computer. Now I don't have the song The Journey because I have the Japanese, so you can see my problem. I know The Journey but can't show you it. And as for the other two tracks, I've just kind of skipped through it. So I'll just kind of briefly go over it. Uh, the journey is, uh, again, kind of melodic like uh, Watch the World Collapse. It's a uh, melodic kind of acoustic bass, but there is a solo to it. So it's kind of acoustic, it's relaxing, it's got a solo to it. It's what Watch the World Collapse probably should have been. That The journey should have been Watch the World Collapse, and then the bonus track should be kind of Watch the World Collapse, I guess. So... Um, yeah, if you get the bonus track, you do get an extra solo. I do hate it if they kind of bands where they do give bonus tracks or location specific tracks. Like Alter Bridges Blackbird does a UK specific, and I am from the UK, so I do get it. But I do still know it's annoying because people in America or you know anywhere else in the world won't get that track, and that track has a solo, so they miss out on it. And I just find that extremely frustrating. Because if I were to have an album where there's like two bonus tracks and they have solos, but then there's tracks in the album that don't have solos, it winds the living crap out of me. So, um, yeah, that kind of reasoning is very annoying and irritating. But, uh, yeah, as I said, I don't think you can get just nine tracks. I think everyone, um, wherever you go, I think you always get the bonus track, uh, The Journey. So you'll get uh, the extra track at the end, which um, is just a very nice, relaxing way to actually finish uh, the album anyway, because it's just very slow, and then you get an enjoyful um, solo and everything. As for the Japanese one, you get two bonus tracks, so you get two, um, which is annoying, but you don't get the journey, so you lose the journey. It's so frustrating. And... Um, one of the tracks doesn't have a solo, the other track does, uh, which I think is the last one, which I think is called uh, The Afterlife. Uh, one of them is melodic, one of them isn't. And uh, with them two, you're getting um, in the 15 minute mark. With The Journey, I think you're just getting into the 15 minute mark. If you didn't have The Journey, the album is kind of short, around uh, the 40 minutes. But as I say, I think everyone gets The Journey and that's pr pretty much what everyone's going to get. So you're just going to get an acoustic track 
with a solo, and that is it. So, overall, the album is not as great as uh, Body Alice, The Offering, which I gave an 8.5 because it was um, a very grand album. It had great solos. It had a great kind of concept and interesting story and everything. It was very dark. The album cover was awesome. But uh, that doesn't do anything to the story. It's just, I like it. Uh, great voice. Um, the songs all sounded very different. Some more emphatic than others. Others extremely catchy and others a bit more grand. Uh, they had that kind of female guest, which uh, kind of added a bit of interest. Great solos, great concept, great story and everything. Great soaring parts, great melodic parts. And then each song uh, kind of changed things up a bit. And uh, you also had uh, that one track, The Path, which was um, an instrumental lead. So like two odd minutes of uh, just lead guitar, which is awesome. So um, this album isn't a concept. It's not telling a story. It doesn't have the grand aspect of it. You do get the keys, which do keep that grandness to it, but you don't get the actual orchestra sound. Uh, the vocalist isn't really as good as he is in the offering. Uh, the solos, although in Regeneration, regeneration, the solos are amazing, but Finest Hour, you don't really get one. Worlds, I failed to say. Um, that solo didn't really do very well. Watch the world collapse, you don't get a solo. So the offering technically probably has better solos and the keys and everything. Pretty much everything is just improved in the offering. So where does that leave uh, Fall From Grace? Well, with the keys and the lead solos, you still get great lead solos, you still get a, a great vocals, you still get uh, differentials between tracks and everything where uh, they kind of do to kind of change paces, some a bit more kind of um, upbeat and then slow pace, some more anthemic than others, some melodic, some uh, very heavy. And then you've got other parts where um, solos are fantastic and keys are uh, really big and everything sounds grand. So uh, it's still a great album and still a lot of fun. You still get great solos, but um, with that, as I say, Final Star, we didn't really get a solo. What's I've had to say, the solo didn't really do very well. Watch the World Collapse is very kind of dull, um, melodic track. Um, so there are still some kind of problems and it's not as big as the offering, so I have to take points down for that. So we'll kind of give this probably an 8.2. It's still very good and everything, and I think goes above the kind of very good mark. It is kind of like a great album, just like the offering, but the offering does that a bit more to get it into that 8.5, which kind of is where my really, 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 really good albums start. And then, you know, just shy below that, it's just like they are very, very, very good. They just don't really hit that unbelievable mark. So 8.2 is still very, very good. It's just not in that kind of high range for me, which is 8.5 and upwards. But um, the offering got there, so at least a, a Borealis album has got into my, you know, really great albums. But 8.2, it's still great nonetheless. There's still um, great solos, great vocals, and I really enjoy listening to this album just because I prefer the offering. It doesn't really make this album any... Uh, worse even though I do prefer the offering so technically this is worse but um I like it it's not worse as in dig god I'm not going to listen to it it's a great listen you should definitely listen to it if you like the offering you should easily like this it won't be as good but it's still enjoyable and it's not something like well I'd prefer the offering this doesn't really do the same on mine so I'm just going to ignore it you'll still want to listen to this album it still does enough to enjoy and not be like uh, it's fine I'll listen to it from time to time you'll listen to it near enough as much as the offering. It's just the offering just has that edge. So that is it from me, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.